library in South Africa of a court. They don't have it. And then I got a brainwave. I wanted to speak to Mr. Baloui to get me one because I've given lectures to the NPA staff at some stage after I retired regarding ballistics. So he wasn't around. So I got to speak to Mr. Simbini. Is that so? Sibani, sorry. And he got me this book. Crime Scene Investigation. And when I did that, I did it within hearing earshot of Mr. Ngumalo and Advocate Msholol. Do you confirm that, lady and gentlemen? Yes, I do confirm. I do confirm that, my lord. Thank Mr. you. you confirm? Let I said this within earshot and within sight of you guys. Uh, my lord, I did not hear the content of the conversation. Okay, I, fine. Had, I saw my lord speaking to All right, Advocate fine. Sibani. Yeah, I'm just placing it on record. It's useless information. Thank you, ma'am. Just the impression some people make. Other with I, Munto State, Lomolino Kuluma Nobaloi. Okay, doctor, take, uh, can you take this? My lord, I'm told, I'm sorry, my lord, I'm told there's still more literature that Advocate Sibanda has gathered for Yeah, yeah, fine, point. because this is elementary, it's for yes. course one students. Yes. So, um, you if, make it it, available, eh? if it carries the blessing of my colleagues. How can, um, how can they refuse a judge informing five. himself about a case? I think it's about five <laughs> textbooks or so. Man. Five? How many? Yeah, five textbooks. Yeah, fine, no problem. Okay. Yeah, so the witness in. Uh, so your name is on the uh, my name is Johannes Stienakam. Uh, do you have any, any objection in taking the oath? I do not. Do you say that the evidence you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing else but the truth? If so, so raise your right hand and say, so help me God. And so help me God. The witness is sworn in. English or Afrikaans, Mr. Dr. Stienkam? I beg your pardon? Well, I have taken Afrikaans no, I'll, I'll, of English. I'll do it in English. Yes, because you have two talent. And it's look matter in Afrikaans. I can well say Thank you. Okay, you can go on. The court pleases, my lord. This witness is going to testify in respect of uh, Exhibit L. L. Yes, Exhibit L forms part of the admissions. The admissions? Yes. Okay. Is this the, yeah. Uh, As per Exhibit F, the witness is also going to refer to Exhibit D, the e photo album of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mulatlo okay. regarding the post-mortem photos. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Stenekamp, just want to show you a document which has, make, has been marked Exhibit L. Is that your affidavit? Uh, that is correct. Uh, exhibit L and Impella Gagu, you and I affidavit Yami. Can you just read the contents of Exhibit L in the record? Firstly, just identify the document. Uh, this is death register number 2076 of 2015. That's the GW7-15 form. And it's a report on a medical legal post-mortem examination. And in, so then starting off with affidavit in terms of section 212, 4 and 8 of Act 51 of 1977. Just a minute to give the uh, number. In the number 2076, 2014, GW715. A postmortem, your nag, a and the Loconage, a chemistin, can you foot the affidavit in the Pansuwa Kege, a section two one two? Yes. I, a doctor, your honor, Stianacom, qualifications MB, CHB, F four path, close brackets, attached to section forensic pathology service, Germiston. Private bag X1221, Germiston, declare under oath in English as follows. 
I am in the employ of the Gauteng Provincial Government as a Principal Specialist Forensic Pathology in Germiston. Just a minute. No, you can read. You can read. Yes. Doctor, when did you acquire your first qualification? Uh, and my Lord, the first uh, qualification was the MBCHB, that's in 1976, here in the University of Pretoria. As a colleague, he found in a portal, a good year, a MBCH, over 1976, Conagre, Lab University of Pretoria. And this after acquiring your qualification, what was your career path like? Uh, after I qualified, I was appointed to the district surgeon since 1979. district surgeon in 1979. Where, doctor? Where? That was in Johannesburg. Uh, in Johannesburg. And the department? Of health, department of health. Uh, so, the Gunaga Department uh, Health. In 1983, I started specializing in forensic pathology. In 1983, I specialized in forensic pathology. And I achieved the qualification, the F4 Path, in 1988. Yes. Uh, F4 Path. Now, so again, I will now get EF for PET, you said 1980? Uh, sorry, 1987. 1987. And what does that stand for, Doctor? Just for uh, a fellowship in forensic pathology. This is an exam that I do through the Colleges of Medicine of South Africa. Global workers are now our college, as well as our medicine in South Africa. You will now get EF for PET. Okay. Yes. I am in the employee of the, oh, sorry, yeah, on the 20... Just, just before you proceed, doctor, <coughs> and from that period um, when you qualified as a forensic uh, pathology uh, specialist, more or less how many postmortems did you carry out per year? Uh, it's usually about 500 autopsies per year. Yes. Are you still in the service of the Department of Health? Uh, I have retired in 2016, my lord. No, I retired in 2016. Is it correct that you were a principal specialist? Uh, that is correct. Now, in that capacity, did you conduct any training? Uh, we usually did training as part of our service delivery. Uh, that's since 1983, where we taught students at the Wits University, also training like paramedics, police, law students, etc. And testifying in court, have you testified in court? I have. Yes, which which forums, which courts? Uh, usually, Eastern courts, regional court, high courts, high court, uh, district court, regional courts, all of them inquests courts. So okay, get in control and try to go in control. I've been managing the corner game of fagas. Yes, funda, regional court, Emma High Court, managing the legend of fagas. Thank you. You can proceed then with your affidavit. On. Uh, 28-10-2014, a body bearing the number 2076 
slash 2014 was pointed out and identified to me by Forensic Pathology Officer E. McQuena of the Germiston Mortuary. Just a minute. Is there a relevant photo that you can point out? Yes, uh, there's a photograph indicating the number, the toe tag on photo 148. Skonaga is told by Nama and Kalela Nagi footing over 28, May 28, October 2014. Kune Mzimbag, Nama is to Muge, Esne number 02076 2014, Engas Konjiswagi, Uyana Oi Forensic Pathology Officer U Imukwena, Owasama Kazin, Echemistin, Kuna Skonaga is told by Esi Jengisale, your number again is told by 148. The court, please, my lord, we have requested that the photos of the post-mortem not be shown yes, for right. the reasons that were canvassed when yeah. we were debating this, this yes, aspect. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Copies of the yes. post -mortem photos. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, <coughs> yes, you may proceed, Doctor. Uh, I conducted a post-mortem examination on the said body and recorded my findings on attached form G77-15, which facts I ascertained through an examination which required skill in biology, anatomy and pathology. Ngase logo enga ptola ege nga pala panti ege kwi form e uchi W7 to 15 no guti futi ege logo ge nga gwenza ege ngo guti noma logo guti inga u guti u gwenza ege u ma ege u ne skill ege kwa ni biology anatomy ka nye futi na yo i pathology. Yes, you can proceed to page 2, Doctor, from in figure 1, then thereafter proceed to room in figure 3. Uh, to the Magistrate of Boxburg, I, Johannes Stenekamp, hereby certify that, one, I examined the body of an adult black male on 28-10-2014 at the Germiston Mortuary, beginning at 8 o'clock. Mina ge lana ge nama lena ge iya ge na ge masistete ya sopokspek. Mbuti mina ucho wa nisistete ni kam ngea shoo ge uguti nga ase nisola ge umzimba ge uwa ke umuntu esilisa o umuntu mnyama nge 28 is ga October 2014 uwa na ge amakaza ase chemistin nga ka lango 8. Yes, you've already placed the contents of paragraph 2 and record. You can proceed to Roman figure 3. Uh, the death occurred as informed on 2016-2014. Yes, indeed. Uh, the chief post-mortem findings in this case were attached See attached schedule of observations. Is to book, no matter who go follow you, you can tell you in a jail on a yoga and zega again. No matter who's on a bar, keep up on the 26th of October 2014. Foot here, over now, over to the other, over to the in Bangela. You can now go, you can now go. If you show you, I'm meaning one. It has a logo. It hamba na wolumbi. You can proceed to page three, doctor. <coughs> Uh, that is the schedule of observations under general one, Roman one, height 1,77 meter, mass 80 kilogram, which I estimated, physique average, nutrition normal. Lana ge uman jengen zela ingam pegang gayo nama ngam bonang gayo ugu tige ugu teba kege pagu 1.77 meters u is nama ge ima ubun zema ba kege gu 80 kilogram loko ngakpa kela nugu tige waiga naga nani ge ima paga tinjenin dau ugun zega ba kege putra ilegi. Roman two special identifying features an adult male wearing a blood stained t-shirt. A bloodstained vest, blue tracksuit pants, and white and blue underpants. Logo ge engi ngam kasa ngago ge ugo tiba gu muntu eslisa umnyama ge owa yefage 
e-t-shirt in my escape as in Thorpe as a snake as a Thorpe in a case a e-t-shirt in my escape as in Thorpe as a snake as a snake as a snake as a white and blue uh, are there relevant photos in this regard? Or? They are. They are on photo 144. I'm show you. It's 144. 146. 146. 147. 147. 148. 144. Uh, I blue, I will find blue, Lonage, a Lali, a Naloga, a Kazi, Lama, a mover, who corner footige, Nembo, and Wojana, a man, a zero point five centimeters, a Napezo, and Jena gave you Blue Golelo, got a la Nasazans and Je, Nasamazans, got a logo, a humble nig, no maga, agu, Kulumesanig, Nalipi, in Naba, every corner, in Noma Uglimala, Ogu corner. Uh, Bullet two, the underpants are blood stained over the back. Bullet three, the white blood stained, blood stained t shirt shows a four centimeter by three centimeter star shaped hole over the central anterior chest region that's over the front of the chest. Yes. Corresponding to wound two in paragraph four. Bese gutige iskipage lisi awa eshko gilege esimthope esasi nekazi skombi sage na maschengi sage imboboge ewu four centimeter by three centimeter ewu thobogo le star nga pezu la nga pambi le suben kota nje la nage nga pezu lu futi lolo gali hambisana age ganyi paragraph four. These are seen, best seen in photograph uh, 152 and 153. Uh, it also shows a one centimeter hole over the back corresponding to wound three. That's also in paragraph four. Bese ikombi sage uimbo boge e u one centimeter nga se muva yonage i hambi sanage no magi ikombi sana na ye na loge in naba le start na loko ge uptola gena u paragraph four. The underlying vest, a bullet four, the underlying vest is blood stained showing a three centimeter by two centimeter rounded hole over the anterior chest, uh, anterior chest region, region, and a one centimeter defect over the posterior re region. That's over the front and the back of the T-shirt. Mr. Gutige, you first the AI program upon the AI neck as you know, you can be saga, in Boboge, a three centimeter by two centimeter, la na pambi lige, as for Benica, and you footy, none as a mover. Doctor, can you just explain the term defect? What does that mean? It's a hole, it's basically a hole. Ukumage, Uguti, Babu in Boboge, Leo. Yes, and the relevant photos? I think they are on 160 and 161. It's not very clear there. It's on 160, no 161, no mage, to Okay, doctor, just look at photos 146 and 152 as well. 146 shows it. 
Jabo Narara 146, as well as 152. Kanye Narara 152. Yes, you may proceed. Then in brackets, the clothing were not required for any special investigation was after discussion with the investigating officer and ballistic team present at the autopsy. Close brackets. In person, no matter in the book, our way to give the problem of costing or the Namasas and the cover it is the most of the tea, Tatuage, a Tatil Bonage, or Nagopenia, a move of Kulumisanage, Kanye na. Nampeni, na la baba penya yuko ni futi ge na la baba sisi wenza ni pam na la baba baba palistik ababe kwa na la pumka tingenza lumsebens. Paragraph three, Roman three, secondary post-mortem changes. The body had been refrigerated, and it is and is well preserved. Umsimbalo na ge wafa wa makazi ni futi ge wote nige kasi. And then I continue to paragraph Roman 4. External appearance of the body and condition of the limbs. Then number 1, for 1, which is visible on photo 154, 15, one, and 159. This is 154, 159. And I describe these as they are ECG stickers, that's electrocardiograph stickers, situated over the left anterior, uh, over the left anterior and right anterior chest walls, so that's the front of the chest, over the left clavicle, that's the left collarbone, and over the right anterior shoulder line. That's the line extending from the shoulder downwards. Nogutiga Gogna Mastika Hake Ingwa Biza Nogutiga Ama ECG Mastika Akonage Ayela Nagusango Tulanga Seguza Kanyi Nalo Lolonga Sekunga Lege Kona La Esfubeni Kanyi Futige Nala Nage Gwi Esombe Gwi Sango Tige Lolonga Se Left Kanyi Ege Futi Nanga Se Righti La Gulonage Esombe. Uh, these in, uh, this indicates that there had been some resuscitative measures performed with an electrocardiograph being performed to check the condition of the heart. And, and doctor, where would the electrocardiograph stickers normally be used? In which setting? Uh, that is usually during resuscitation. La mastika ge, mastika ge, asetel jiswa uma ge uzama gogo tumutum tene ge esapila ge. Oh, yes. Or for diagnostic procedure. No ma ge uma gwenza logo biza ogwa guti u diagnose. Yes. Uh, then paragraph four, number two, and that is the uh, important wound. And it is visible on photos 154 right through to 159. Uh, Lee And I described it as situated over the right anterior chest wall, that's the right front of the chest. One centimeter to the right of the midline and one three five centimeter above the heel is a three centimeter by one comma five centimeter oval shaped lacerated wound. It's a torn oval shaped a wound. And then there is a 
semicircular abrasion situated over the superior and inferior aspects, that's now the wound that I mentioned, measuring 0,3, the upper part, and 0,5 centimeters below the lower one. The Namage, Ling Uenage, Umkuzuga, the Uguti, Lalo was zero point three, and a Pezulu get on your foot, the Bozu zero five centimetage, Ge Zanj. Doctor, can you describe abrasion? Abrasion is a damage to the superficial layer of the skin. In this case, I, was th it, I thought it was due to the muzzle of the firearm that had been used. The wound edges appear seared. That's a heat effect. That's burning. Okay, that's it. Situated just below the skin, blackened granular material, consistent with gunshot residue, are noted in the underlying soft tissue. So when I opened this wound and explored it, I noted this black granular material. <laughs> And then in brackets, I came to a conclusion following ex the examination of this wound. I said this wound is consistent with a contact bullet entrance wound. And I say that uh, due to the fact that when, there is, when a muzzle is pressed against the skin, all the elements, that's the gas, the heat, the gunpowder, are driven into the skin. And so with a muzzle firmly against the skin, especially the gas will go below the skin and explode backwards towards the outside. And resulting in this original lacerated, big lacerated wound as I have described. <coughs> Doctor, when you say the, the, the gases explode backwards to the outside, what do you mean? Uh, away from the skin towards the muzzle or towards the firearm. And the, the gun shot residue, what? What will that have resulted from? Uh, that's from a firearm, the residue that was ignited. The relevant photos, doctor? Um, that is one five, uh, that's 154 to 159. Yes, you may uh, Then I've got a heading. Wound track, the track of this wound passes downwards, backwards, from front to back, mm -hmm. downwards, and laterally away from the midline of the body. Manjege, in the lage, the Gulimala Namala Naba Ukhambengayo, Ugutige, Linzulage, Lee Pants, Bessel Lian Asemu Vage, Bessel Lee Zulage, Guanage, Ulain Donage, Womzimba, Namala, Mzimbin. 
Doctor, if we can ask you just to demonstrate that. Uh, over the front of the chest, the right. over the breastbone, one, cent one centimeter to the right of the midline, over the breastbone, around the level of rib three. Yes, and, and the wound passing downwards, backwards, and, and laterally. If yes. you can maybe just demonstrate it just quickly. You know. uh, it goes down. I think there's, uh, yes. there is a photograph. Yes, we will get to that. If you uh, can maybe just quickly just show. On my on body? Oh, okay. I've got my pen here indicating the firearm, and it would be roughly in a direction like this. Yes. yes. From front to back, and away from the midline of the body. Yes. From understanding, what is the angle? As you say, goes down. The angle. It's an acute angle. It's an acute yeah. angle. The angle is on the acute. Along the wound track, then first bullet, it perforates the sternum on the right at the level of rib three. The sternum is the breastbone at the level of rib three. And perforate, so can you just explain the term perforate? It passes through. It makes a hole through it. Showing blackening of the outer aspect, and that's still consistent with the bullet contact wound, the gunshot residue. And then it also shows, as well as inverted bone fragments over the inner aspect of this bone. So little fragments of bone are driven inside the body, and this confirms a contact entrance wound. Uh, not a contact uh, entrance wound. Uh, this perforation or the perforation measures one centimeter in diameter, enlarging towards the inner aspect of the sternum where inverted bone fragments are noted. It's not clear, but it's around photo number 173. And then the next bullet, it lacerates the pericardial sac, that's the heart sac, leaving a two by one centimeter irregular laceration. Can just simplify this? Uh, yes, and what, what is an irregular laceration? Uh, where no, it lacerates. Can you just simplify it? Lacer it tears. Okay. Laceration is a torn wound. The asege it tabulage, konage, lang, paratigionage, inclusio, yashia konage, uktabugage, ogu, two centimeter by one centimeter. Black, black, granular, black granular material as well as small fragments of bone are noted surrounding this de defect in the anterior mediastinum. The anterior mediastinum is the front part where the heart is located. You say, what did it do there? Where are you? Mediastinum. Okay, yes. What did it do there? And uh, that's just the black granular. Okay. You look at the image of 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 the image
<coughs> and the relevant photos? It's 176. And 177. And one can see the heart sack just pushed up. It's not very clear on those photos. Uh, and, and this finding in this bullet, is it indicative of anything? The black granular material? Yes. It's indicative of a, 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 a contact bullet wound. It's still the gunpowder that's driven into this wound. And then the next bullet, it lacerates the heart, resulting a three centimeter by one centimeter irregular laceration, that's a tear, extending from the anterior wall, that's the front wall of the right ventricle, that's the right chamber of the heart that pushes the blood towards the lungs. Just a moment. <coughs> Uh, it's full, we still with this wind, partially lacerating the right coronary artery. That's the artery that supplies the heart with muscles. You get two, one on the left, one on the right. This is the right coronary artery. Yes, it tabulage, la conage, ego, niggers a conage, the pampa conage, a guntrizio, ama muscle, utola ea, a good left, and yes, a right, ea, a tabula, ea, go right. And this laceration that I'm talking about also extends into the right atrium. That's the antechamber to the uh, right ventricle. Blood from the body accumulates in the right uh, atrium and goes to the heart, right side of the heart where it's, where it's pumped to the lungs. And then I'm still doing the wound track. It then bruises the upper lobe of the right lung, bruises or contuses, contusing. Bese futige itablage nomage ihuzulage la nasinga pezuluge nomalogo oguza boguti yi lobe. Yeah, so it's punga sanga go right. Uh, what is an upper lobe? Upper doctor? lobe, the uh, right lung has, is consisting of three lobes, upper, a middle, and a lower lobe. And I'm talking about the upper part. And then it also perforates the lower lobe <coughs> of the right lung, leaving a five centimeter by three centimeter irregular perforating hemorrhagic lacerated wounds. So it's perforating hemorrhagic and just explain hemorrhaging in, in simple terms, Doctor. Uh, that's bleeding into the soft tissues of the lung. Uh, and then the second last bullet, it, is, it perforates the ninth intercostal space on the right posteriorly. That's at the right of the back, inside of the chest, at the back, leaving a two centimeter by one centimeter hemorrhagic perforating lacerated wound. Noted in photos 182 and 183. Okay. Let me just explain that part. Which one? The one uh, just The ninth intercostal space is the space between the two ribs situated on the right. Lanage uma ekulumage ngayoge in ninth space, ekulumage ngama ribs amabilige, as to give. 
Yes. I'm a good right. Okay. 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 Which is explained, sorry, when you mean wound number three. Uh, that is uh, paragraph four, number three. School man, I get paragraph four, number three. Which is an external wound over the back. I go in a bag, Evila, and I say move vague. And I describe this wound. And let me show you the picture would be, I think, 162, the best picture. Uh, and I described it as a 1,3 by 0,7 oval-shaped lacerated wound, again torn edges, situated over the right posterior chest, that's the back of the chest. And then, you cast out the one point two centimeter by zero seven centimeter. Evila Nasemu Vage, Evita Bugile, Busangotilanga Buraiti. Four comma five centimeter to the right of the midline and one two six centimeter above the heel. Besuguti Libagi, who four point five centimeter Busangoti, Langa Langa Burait, Namalogo Sugu Jage, can you put in one two six centimeter? Uh, and then there's a diagram where I indicated the wounds, uh, the wound, uh, wound one and two, the ent entrance and the exit wound, as well as the wound tack. Uh, and, and just, Doctor, if you can, just maybe in terms of the entrance wound, if you say wound two, uh, can you just maybe for record purposes, what do you mean? Uh, wound two is paragraph four, number two. Oh, wound paragraph two. four, Roman, paragraph Roman four, two. Uh, oh, wound two, Yanage, oh, paragraph four, uh, two. And wound three? That will also be paragraph four, number three. Yes, paragraph four, number three. Then wound two to three, which paragraphs will you be referring to? It's two, uh, still Roman four, paragraph four. And two, can you know two? And three under paragraph four. Can you know three? Na pantsu wa kege u paragraph four. Uma sen kulumage ngalo kulimal. Yes, you may proceed, Doctor. Uh, then I go to the systematic examination. Head and neck, Roman 5. Scalp, no scalp contusions, that's bruises, are noted. The skull is intact. Roman six, intracranial contents, the brain, membranes surrounding the brain, and blood vessels show no pathological changes, and the brain mass is one four nine zero. And then Roman 7, orbital, nasal and oral cavities, that's the eyes, nose and ears, those cavities are intact. Roman 8, mouth, tongue and 
mouth, tongue and pharynx, no pathological changes, that's the mouth, tongue and throat. Number nine, Roman nine, neck structures, hyoid bone and laryngeal cartilages, those are the small bones here in the throat area, are intact. Larynx is the part behind that, below the two. Thyroid gland, that's the gland in the neck. Thyroid The blood vessels are intact. Uh, soft tissues of the neck, no hemorrhages are present. Uh, then Roman 10, thoracic cage <coughs> and diaphragm, the right chest cavity contains 1,700 milliliter of free and clotted blood, and that's with reference to the injuries to the heart and the wound tract. Besugutige, Octolagala Nama Upegaga Wog Umzimba, is for bag a good sango to Lama Gurati, or Tolagala, one thousand seven hundred millimeter, uh, Wala Sanga, and the Maxes in the Wone, and the Malogo Besuguti, Clotica Yalo Ikazi, Logo Kulumanga, Oge Ugly Mala, Log Awaktol. Number eleven. Just before you proceed, Doctor, the fact that. The chest cavity contain 1,700 milliliters of blood. What, what is that indicative of? Uh, that's blood loss, uh, internal blood loss, from the heart uh, as well as the lung in that area that resulted in this blood flowing into the chest cavity, resulting in the lung, left lung collapsing. In simple layman's terms, what, what does that mean? The, the internal blood loss, what, what does that mean? Uh, the blood is, uh, the person is bleeding into a body cavity. Like into the chest cavity, is bleeding from a source, in this case the heart and the lung, and this blood is flowing into the chest cavity. And when we say blood loss, that's technically speaking outside the body because it's not in the blood vessels where it should be. So uh, the rest... So though it's not, although it's inside the body, it's not inside the blood vessels and that is possibly the mechanism or how this person died. Uh, so uh, the mediastinum and esophagus, that's the gullet, and the uh, front part, that's the area below the breastbone. And these were normal. Uh, Roman 12, trachea and bronchi. The trachea and bronchi contain a small amount of blood-stained fluid. Trachea, the windpipe, and the small airways contain a small amount of blood-stained fluid. Probably due to the injury of the left lung. No, uh -huh. sorry, injury of the right lung. Logo kuna bangelo age uguli mala we sponga ge lesi sanga bo right. And, and the, the fact that the trachea and bronchi contain a small amount of blood-stained fluid, is this an indicative of anything? It's possible that the person could still have breathed, moving this blood-stained fluid uh, up.
upwards into the airways. Uh, then uh, Roman 13, pleurae and lungs, that's the covering of the heart and the lungs. The right lung is pale and partially collapsed, that's due to the injury. And the left lung is congested on section. The blood vessels there are still a bit full of blood. Doctor, the fact that the right lung was pale, is that indicative of anything? Well, the lung was injured, so it's blood loss, uh, blood loss basically. Uh, the mass of the right lung was 300, and the mass of the left lung was 510 grams. In the heart and the pericardi uh, pericardium, also see paragraph 4 for the injuries. Uh, the pericardial sac contains less than 50 milliliter of blood. Apart from the injuries mentioned, the rest of the heart was normal. normal. Uh, the heart mass, I weighed it as 400 gram. Paragraph 15, Roman 15, the large blood vessels were intact. Uh, then the next heading is the abdomen, that's the stomach. S -s -s 16, the peritoneal cavity, that's the cavity in which all the organs are housed in the stomach, was normal. Then 17, the stomach and contents. The stomach contains 500 milliliter of partially digested food material in which rice, Vegetable matter and fragments of meat can still be identified. Uh, then 18, the intestines and mesentery, the bowel and mesentery are pale, again indicating the blood loss. <coughs> Uh, then Roman 19, liver, gallbladder, biliary passages. The liver is pale, again indicating blood loss. The gallbladder contains bile, and the bile ducts are patent. The liver mass was 1540, which is normal. Paragraph 20, the pancreas is pale. What is the pancreas? Pancreas is the organ, one of the internal organs next to the liver and the stomach. Paragraph 21, the 
That's the fact that the pancreas was pale, is it indicative of anything? Again, blood loss. And the pale liver? And the same. A paragraph 21, the spleen, the capsule of the spleen is wrinkled. This again is an indication of blood loss. Okay. And which part of that? The what? The spleen. Yes. The spleen, there's a capsule surrounding the spleen, and this mm -hmm. sprinkle is like shriveled and wrinkled, indicating blood loss. Uh, and the fact that the spleen was wrinkled, is it indicative of anything? Blood loss. The adrenal glands are normal. The kidneys are pale, again indicating blood loss. Uh, Fourteen. The urinary bladder and urethra contains a hundred milliliter of clear urine. Uh, the pelvic walls and genital organs were normal. And the spine and the spinal cord were intact, and the cord was not examined. And then I took some specimens for DNA, blood swaps from the fingernails for DNA with a seal number and evidence band, and I handed it to SFOE McQuena. And then Additional observations. The autopsy was attended by the investigating officer, A.S. Mutwedi from the Provincial Investigating Unit, Warrant Officer T. Tim Schlambu from the Provincial Task Team, Shasha, from the uh, Captain Mangena from Ballistics, and Lieutenant Makati from Ballistics, as well as Warrant Officer Ntini from Ballistics. Uh, Warrant Officer A.S. Muntwedi, uh, was a Provincial Investigating Unit, Warrant Officer T.T. Mshato, Nayego, a Provincial Task Team, uh, Captain Mangena, uh, Obuya Kuma Ballistics, Kanye Nayege, uh, Lieutenant Makati, Nayego, uh, Ballistics, Kanye, uh, Warrant Officer Ntini, uh, Oma Ballistics. According to the history, the deceased was shot in his home. Following this, he was taken to a hospital where he was certified as dead. No treatment was given in hospital. And according number three is according to the verbal information, it appears that the deceased was shot during an attempted Armed robbery. And then there were no special investigations that I needed to consider for my cause of death. Thank you, Doctor. If I can then ask you to come back to page two. Paragraph Roman figure five, the cause of death. 
I got the cause of death consistent with bullet wound of the chest involving the heart and lung. In Bangalore, no matter is that to suction a bag, Baba, Uglimala, no matter in a bag, Ella Bangalore, Bangalore, you're not getting time for Esubin, Sanganisa, in his yoga and in his punga. Doctor, do you confirm the correctness of your report and stand by it? I do. Doctor, just a general, just general aspects. If you go to page six of your report, number two, so according to the history, the deceased was shot at his home. Following this, he was taken to a hospital where he was certified as dead. Are you able to give an indication of giving the clinical picture that you've just outlined, how long the disease would have survived after the infliction of the wound? Well, uh, the heart and the lungs are important organ, organs, and injury, especially this type of injury to those organs, can cause a fatality. Sometimes it's instantaneously. In this case, I do not think so because of the mechanism of death, which I explained as possibly the uh, blood loss. And I think in this case, and he's quite a fit young man, he probably would have survived seconds, minutes, definitely not hours. Lanage, Uma Sing, Shilog, and Umilag and Yenzelag, and Nomage, Loko Ogaba in Bangalag, and Nomage is Kali is a surgeon, so I go Mangang in Peggy Leg, Bobonagalag, a green season, Jenage, a young Peggy Leg, a fifty footy, some beggar, and a survivor, Ama minutes, Ama seconds, or to I am a horror. No good footy gate, Miss Puma Gan and Ioga, in Chizzi, or good Ama Okans, Abadu Legi Leg, Mzimbin. And you mentioned during your findings that there was blood loss and the destruction of the heart. Yes. And she loved Ugutige, a Wabu Ikazi, the Wala Segalwage, Ikazi, Kanye Futige, Nokumalako, in Fizi. It was, sorry, can I just recap? I didn't hear quite well. Uh, blood loss, and there was an injury to the heart and the lung. Yes. Ugutige, while I said, I can't go back to the Ugumala, and she's waiting again in a six pung in foot. Now, Doctor, if I can ask you to turn to page four of the sketch there, indicating the wound track. You earlier on, just scroll down. Just yes, the, the wound track. You you earlier commented that the, uh, the the wound is at an acute angle. What would you say the trajectory of the wound is? It's down, back, and. Uh, away from the midline. Ukhamba uh, guayoge in travel, Gutiqua Gusage, Guyana Semu Vage, Besege, Gushifta, Nabuhamba, Kusuga Guyanage in midline, Yom Zimba. Now, Doctor, are you able to venture an opinion as to why the position of the deceased was at the time when the wound was inflicted? And my Lord, we are, when we do the autopsies, we usually describe the injuries as if the person is standing up, okay. upwards. Umage sends a Yonage autopsy Lenage, see Kazaga Ugumala Logu, Mogotiga Umuntu Lonage, Umige, Nama Umile. With his hands next to his sides, palms. Is uh, anta zake gezila imekle dini? Palms facing forwards. Noguti ge zipulege zipege na pambi. And the head looking straight ahead. Kanye ge ne kanda ge lipege na straight. They call it the so-called anatomical position. By bisa noguti ge anatomical position.
in, in reality, we always know this is not so. Because, uh, people, when they are shot or assaulted, tend to move around or bend or do some movements uh, during okay. this. And this instance, I can, for instance, uh, think, according to my autopsy findings, that if the weapon is held in a position like this, the deceased could have moved forwards. Moving forwards and bending down at the waist, slightly bending down at the waist. This if the accused was standing right in front of him. Or he could have tried to push the firearm away from his body. Pulling it downwards in the downwards, backwards, and uh, lateral position. Now, Doctor, if you can have a look at 15 of Exhibit D, photo 15. 15. Yes, photo 15. The evidence is that there was a struggle between the deceased and other occupants of the house and the attackers there in the kitchen. What would your comment be regarding the post-mortem findings? Well, basically nothing unless I take into consideration some of the notes and things that I see on the, on the uh, wooden door, which looks like a tube. Uh, That's basically what I would the bullet would have gone the other way. If it was shot standing against the door, it would obviously have gone through the, the door. Now, Doctor, are you able to state as to how long the, it took for the bullet to, to, to perforate the, um, as you stated in your findings, to perforate the body of the deceased? Are we talking about seconds, milliseconds, perhaps? I'm sure a ballistic officer can give you more detail on the speed of the firearm. 
Nesponsor also got to Lona or Seven Zanazo, Epam, Lonoma Palestic, Gurinage, or Nigazage, Noma Unga Shog, Mela, Naso, is Vinny, Noma is Pit, Tisayo, in Tam, is Pam. But I'm specifically referring to the bullet entering and passing through the body. Got a Minam Kuruman, Unga, Nagayoga, in Tam, Ubesege, Ia, Zula, Mzimbin. Now, during that process with this, which the deceased have started bleeding when, when, when the bullet entered and, and, and left the body, as, as you've just described. He would have started bleeding immediately once it injured the heart and the, lard, and, and the uh, lung and the small artery. He would have started bleeding immediately. As long as his heart was pumping, he was bleeding out away from the heart into the chest cavity. So if he was, if the mechanism of death was, as I suspect, that it the, was blood loss, he died of blood loss, uh, the blood would have circulated from the left side of the heart, which was still pumping, down through the body, up on to the right side of the heart, uh, and he would be bleeding from the right side of the heart. And this would be landing into the chest cavity. Some blood can still leak out through the skin wounds. It would not be like spouting like an arterial blood, for instance. What would be the position of say the blood will not be spouting out? Uh, squirting out, for instance. Uh, I'm talking from out, out to the outside of the body. Yes. Yeah. And just lastly, Doctor, you mentioned that you have taken a second for the body to, uh, for the bullet to enter and, and leave the body. Um, when the disease started bleeding internally, would the bullet still be in the body, or what would, the, what would be the position? Milliseconds. Uh, as a court, please, yes. Yes. My correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Milliseconds to seconds, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, what, what, would, what would be the position regarding the bullet? When the, when the disease started bleeding internally? Then the bullet must have left the body already. Thank you, my lord. Those are the only aspect we wanted to take up with the witness. Yes, I'm sorry. My lord, I see it's almost uh, 20 past 11. If we may take a short agenda, my lord. Okay, fine. Fifteen minutes agenda.
Are you getting audio? Is it clean or there's a buzz on the audio? Is it clean audio? Is it clean? Is it clean? Is it clean audio? Or is there a buzz? Is it clean or on the audio? Is it clean? Is it clean? Is it clean or there's a buzz? Is it clean? Is it clean or there's a buzz? Is it clean? Oh, there's a pause. Is it clean? Are you here?
Suti. Utige uma ubona isuti ge ila egushe konage. Yes. Uh, the stippling that we see, which I didn't see here, is usually a, a close wound and see around the wound. It's due to the burning and unburnt particles. Uh, now, with respect to the travel, like in a contact wound, will we then see the suit rather than the stippling itself? Uh, a suit, they're all the gunpowder uh, yes. gun residue, the suit is just burnt out completely. That's all. Now, with respect to the clothing worn by the victim, how will they impact your forming an opinion as to the range? Will we see the barrel mark of the, the muzzle mark on the body itself uh, when the muzzle is pressed against the body if somebody is wearing a vest and a t-shirt as it's in this case y yes you could you could still see that eh uma ngoku ukuthi ke impahla ka wayigqokelwe ziyaphenywa ke noma nazo ziyavivinywa ke impela ke uma ukuthi sibhamba sasibekiwe kuyona ke khona ke i mark ozoyibona noma ungayibona ke leyo mark le Now, again, there's something that's called bullet wipe, which is the greasy part of the outside of the bullet, which will reveal itself on the entrance wound uh, normally. Uh, did you see that with respect to the T-shirt worn by the victim in this case? No, I did not. Uh, and then the, the, the contact wounds that you talked about, uh, there are various contact wounds that will be the loose contact, the angled one, the hard one, and the incomplete one. If I understood you correctly, you said this was an angled acute contact wound, correct? Yes, it was a hard contact, it was right against the skin, but the barrel moved slightly in the direction as I've described. And now, with respect to when you want to do examination, in this case it was not done, uh, for, for reasons that you said, you, the investigating team, ballistic and investigation, decided that uh, they shouldn't be tested. What was the reason, in fact, for that? I don't think we could see anything. I can't remember. That's all I can't remember. That was not significant to them. Uh, now, evidence led in this case is that there was a scaffold in the kitchen at uh, photo 15 that was shown just before the break, and there were about two suspects and six adults in that space. Uh, yeah, we're just moving to photo 15 now. In that space, there were photo 15 is on the screen. Now, evidence is that there were there was a scuffle in that space among two suspects and six adult persons that were in the house. Now, I want to touch on this with respect to the PR test or the GSR test. What is the radius for the uh, uh, GSR to attach to people that are near when the firearm is uh, fired in that space? That, unfortunately, I won't be able to tell okay, you. That's, that's for, for ballistics. ballistics. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah, we also spoke about the uh, CCTV cameras that were placed in the You also spoke about the searing around or the burn around 
the entrance wound. Can you describe that for us? Uh, when the fire, <coughs> sorry, when the firearm is, is fired, and the uh, gunpowder is ignited, there is a flame coming out. So that burns the edges. So you get the searing effect. And in general, with contact wounds against the clothing, what sort of a mark will a contact wound have on a T-shirt if the muzzle is pressed against the skin and the T-shirt? It, it could be anything. It could be nothing. It could just be a hole, or you could see depending on obviously the angle of the firearm and how it was held, that you could see some of the remains of the uh, gunpowder. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a ballistic question. If, you, if it's a ballistic, you let me know. Uh, a witness testified in this court that he observed a firearm that was used by one of the suspects that it had a will. In your experience, in your training as a pathologist, will you know the type of firearm that's got a will? No, I won't. Okay. And you've testified, and it's at page six of your report uh, in the specimens retained. And then it says blood and swabs from the fingerprints uh, were taken for DA analysis and the serial bag number and the SQE person that you handed the specimen to. Was GSR uh, or PR test done on the hands of the victim himself? I don't know. Now, I'm touching on the other aspect that was raised by my learned colleague from the state, uh, which is the following. A witness has testified in this court that upon hearing that the victim was shot and they being informed that this, the person who testified Plus community members, they went to a nearby park to look for the alleged perpetrators. And they searched the park, and after plus minus 12 minutes, they went back to the scene. And when they entered through this door, just near the hallway here, they found the victim lying down unattended. Now, my question to you is this. Uh, after plus minus 12 minutes of no medical attendance at all on the victim, would he have survived that wound he suffered? The doctor has just testified that it's not possible that he could have been alive for hours. Okay, all right. He says it's seconds. Seconds or milliseconds. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. If the court can bear with me, I'm going to up. Now, as well as uh, just for clarification purposes, that the same persons, when they returned from the park, they tried to sit the victim up, and then they saw blood on the back. Is it procedure, or how would that affect the injuries if somebody shot on the chest? Is it, uh, people try to sit him up or pick him up like that with respect to no, the internal injuries? In terms of worsening that injury, yes. are you saying that yes. it, it won't do much? It, do much. it won't do much. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. As the court persists, my lord, that is the questions that I have for the doctor. Mr. Mlefi. I'm going to try and paint a scenario that was given by the state witnesses who testified, eyewitnesses, who testified about how possibly the incident might have had, might have had happened in the house. Um, I will do that with a view to try and give you just a bit of a background then we come and speak about your possible findings on the fact that the firearm was most probably fired from an angle of depression. Do you understand? Thank you. Now, <clears throat> according to the eyewitnesses, well, there are two versions, but I'll explain them to you. Um, one side of the story is that um, just, a pick up for, uh, just a bit of a background. According to the state witnesses, there are two people who got into the house whilst they were seated in the sitting room, one of which had a firearm. The other one did not have a firearm in his possession. Now, <clears throat> The one who had a firearm gave some instruction that he wanted money and cell phones. One of the occupants of the house stood up and accosted the gentleman who had a firearm, pushed, them, pushed him aside, and then dashed out of the house. That's when then the rest of the occupants of the house also stood up, and a commotion then happened. They accosted the two people, the intruders, we prefer to call them intruders here at court, up to the kitchen area. That is generally the bit of a background. Now, one version from the eyewitnesses who were in the house is that the deceased then was in a tussle or was fighting with the person who had a firearm. That's now one of the versions. And as they were fighting, the person who had a firearm has had his back on the <coughs> kitchen door, as you're looking at photo number 15. In other words, the, the, the firearm person or the person who was in possession of the firearm was leaning on the, on, the, on the kitchen door as the disease was facing him. Do you follow? Now, there was a shot that went off and everybody started to run away. Um, there's basically no indication that somebody said, no, I saw how the shot was fired. It was just a shot that went off as the deceased and the person with the firearm were fighting for the firearm. Now, I know you might know, we are, we are not a ballistic expert, but on the basis of that first scenario, when you look at photo number 15, those are the markings where the bullet struck the door as well. Would you say that accords with the explanation, taking into account that the deceased was on the other side of the door, he was not leaning on the door, 
it was actually the person who had a firearm who was on the door. Would you say that accords with the factual explanation as presented to this court? And also, the fact that according to your finding, the bullet was fired from an angle of depression. No, that would not make sense. Thank you. Now, that was just the first scenario that was given to this court by the state witnesses. Now, the second scenario is one of the witnesses also testified that as the skirmishness was happening in the kitchen, the deceased was in a tussle or was fighting with the person who did not have a firearm, and that fighting was taking place at that door area. Do you follow? As in when the person who did not have a firearm was fighting with the deceased at that door area, the person who had a firearm was behind the deceased. Do you also follow? Now again, in view of your explanation that the, the, that the shot, um, the, I mean, in view of your analysis and your conclusion that a shot could have been fired from an angle of depression, does the second scenario also accord with your finding? Do I understand you correctly is that this scenario implies that the deceased was uh, shot from the back? Do I understand you correctly? I, I, I did not get that talk. You're a bit low. Uh, uh, do I understand you correctly? Yes. If the, the, the scenario that you have described implies that the deceased was shot from the back, so the entrance wound would have been at his back. Do I understand you correctly? I'm, I'm, I'm not implying anything. I'm only trying to give you the facts that are presented to this court in yes. terms of the second scenario. The person who had a firearm being at the back of the deceased. Now, in terms of your finding, is that the entry wound is on the sternum, is on the front chest, and the exit wound is at the back. Now, the witness says, The deceased was in a tussle with a person, it's just a repetition, was in a, was in a tussle with a person who did not have the firearm, but the person who had the firearm was at the back of the deceased. Now your findings are saying the entry wound was in the front, the exit wound was in the back, and more so from your analysis of the wound is that the bullet could have been fired from an angle of depression just your opinion. Does that accord with your findings? No, it does not. No. No, go go buti ge umu fi ge wa yelu sana no muntu ge owa yenga petes pam. Bese go go tigo wa yelu petes pam wa yenga se muva kwa ke ge umu fi kwa se no go ge agusanga ni ge na no go mina ge ingi toli le umanga ba se ngola ge pega wa na ge umzimba wa kumu fi agusanga ni go go tigo wa yelu petes pam wa yenga se muva kwa ke. Thank you, Doug. I had so many questions, but I realized that uh, most of them relate to ballistic expertise and your pathologies. You dissect bodies when they come there to identify the causes of death, not so. Thank you, Doug. I don't think I've got any further questions to you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I do have questions, my lord. Thank yes, you. yes, go yes. ahead. Thank you. Doctor, 
Thank you, Doctor. Amongst the police officers, Doctor, that attended the autopsy was um, Warrant Officer Mthatlo and um, Captain Mangana. Do you confirm that? Yes. 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 Doctor, there is evidence by one of these uh, witnesses or police officials that the, the bullet projectile that was found at the crime scene was not measured. Against that background, at the to uh, autopsy, Doctor, were there any measurements that were taken by the police officers of the exit and entrance wounds? No, the, the usual practice is that the doctor who is performing the autopsy will take the measurements of the wounds. According to the, the evidence, doctor, that has been tendered in this court, the incident occurred at that photo in the kitchen at photo 15 of Exhibit D. There is evidence, uh, Doctor, that the deceased, after he had been shot, he, he moved from that kitchen and he fell on the sitting room. Maybe the sketch plan is going to assist us. Can, can we be assisted with the beaming of the sketch plan? There's a photo that uh, I've just um, highlighted to you, Doctor, photo 15 of Exhibit D. After, after the, the disease had been shot, Doctor, in the chest, standing up straight, what would be his uh, 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 position after the gunshot? Would he be <coughs> still be remaining up straight or, or he will fall down? It is certainly, well, you would expect a person to fall down. That's the classic thing. But depending on how strong you are, it's possible that this person could have moved around. Are you able to tell this court, Doctor, for how long would he be in a position to move uh, from, from that point that is at the door? <coughs> how long in time? Would he be in a position to move from the door? I don't know how long it in will distance. take you. No, I don't know. I just say? Yes, Lord. Um, I'm mean, we're talking about seconds to a few minutes here. There is also evidence, Doctor, that if you look at uh, the sketch plan, you was shot at the door, the door will be the, the <coughs> part, the below part of, of uh, just look at the, uh, the sketch plan. The door will be the, the lower part of the sketch plan, will be at the lower part of the sketch plan. Yes. Yes. And then there is also evidence that he was able to move from that point and he fell on the sitting room. There the, the, the are couches there. Yeah. The, the, the red. Uh, so, so, yeah. Yes, th those are two couches uh, opposite each other. And he fell in between the couch, the couch on the, on the right, and the TV stand. Will that be possible? Yes. Uguti ke wasuka kona la pe ana ke ekishin wayo wagle la na makauchi kona yebo kungenze galoko. He also testified, doctor, that he the deceased bled heavily internal. He bled internal. 
internally. Yes, yes. that's correct. What they also played external, that is from the exit wound. They would have been dribbling of wounds. I mean, this is an open wound, like a normal a skin wound. So they would be dribbling of dribbling of blood. Certainly, it could be it could be there. Yebo again, no consis away kazi gal consis elang apan jaga nago ke begum apon. Will also be correct, doctor, that this dribbling of blood will be from the kitchen. That is the point at the door to the sitting room, in between the couch and the TV stand. The dribbling will be found from the kitchen. That is the movement from where he was to the sitting room. Yes, if you found him, then you can assume that was the movement after he was shot. Okay. Doctor, when you look at uh, the photo album, Exhibit D, starting from photo 12, 15. <coughs> 26. You will confirm, Doctor, that there, there, there is no tripling of blood. Amongst the few photos that I've highlighted to you. 15, 12, 15, 12, 15, 26, 26. Yeah, I don't see any blood there. Yebo, the great tomb on 12, 15, 26. Yebo, I'm born in Kazilapo. Doctor, there's been this theory by, by the defense that the, the scene was contaminated, cleaned before the arrival of the police. Will that suggest that theory if you don't see the dripping of blood? If he was walking and if he was dripping blood, then surely, yeah. I mean, Doctor, there, there's been this theory by the defense that the scene was contaminated, you know, interfered with before the arrival of the police. So the absence of blood will mean or support that theory that there has been some contamination by some people before the police arrive. That's it. You mean blood? Yes, blood spot. Because contamination is ambiguous. The Unless I understand the doctor, he says if he was dripping blood, the deceased, just listen to me, doc, the deceased had a, a t shirt on. And if you look at the photos, when he was brought to the hospital, as you as your observation, his T-shirt was bloodied backwards and forwards. And according to your analysis, blood also percolated towards his trousers. That's correct. Right, so that's yes. the background. This yeah. gentleman was not naked. Yes. That's it. Can you exclude the possibility of the blood percolating from the wound? You actually testify that there was no squirting or spray. Yes. of the blood. Yes. It was not like squirting tele out. Yes, mm. telescoped. Mm. It was bloodied. Most of the blood was contained within the chest cavity. Is that yes. so? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the background I understand. Yeah. Yes. Maybe, Doctor, if I can make a U-turn and, uh, and ask the following question in a different way. There's a witness here by uh, Ulelani mm. Naja. He says, when you arrive at the scene, you found the disease at the passage. The passage will be, sorry, Kayang Naja, sorry, it's Kayang Naja, not Bulelan. Sorry, Tot, I'm just looking for this photo so that I can take you straight away to the photo. Sorry, Doctor, it's a pity that the, the, that passage is not clearly depicted. Maybe if we can use the sketch plan, the, 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 the sketch plan that you have just used. Thank you. 
Yes, he found him lying at that point, facing upward. With the exit wound, is it also possible to find blood, to, to, to find blood there at that spot? If the deceased was lying upward, facing upward, and there is an exit wound at, at his back. This is possible. <laughs> Doctor, will that be dropped of blood or it will be a pool of blood where it would be lying, it facing upwards? It would be like a smudge area that you would be lying in, your, as if your clothes are wet and you lie on something. I also heard you, doctor, saying that if the disease was against the door, the kitchen door, the, the, the bullet would have gone through, exited, and went through the door. What did you mean by that? He never said that. Did you say that, Doc? That the bullet went through the door? I can see if, you're surprised. If the bullet was through him and yeah. it went out of him, yes. it could have gone through the door. Yeah, it could have. Yeah. Not it went through the door. Yes. yes. I'm sorry. Not, it yeah. Thank my daughter, I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you, my lord. <coughs> Doctor, Doctor Stienkamp, you testified about the wound track. <coughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Okay. You testified about the wound track, that it was from the front to the back, but towards lower side towards the back. Am I correct? Did I understand you correct? Yes. From okay. front to back, <coughs> front to back, and downwards and away from the midline. Downwards. Okay. Could that have been caused by the fact that the shooter was taller than the deceased. It's possible, yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> is, is in a lay's term, doctor, if I understand the the gunshot wound that you examined, was it a fatal wound or what? I beg your pardon? The gunshot wound, was it a fatal wound or what? Yes, it was a fatal wound. Okay. Yes, I do understand that, but just uh, clarify this for me. Would it have made a difference had the deceased been transported in a stretcher than being transported in a private car to the hospital? It was a fatal wound and he would have survived a few seconds to minutes. I don't think so. I think if you are in a situation where you have a critical ill patient, you should try and get him to the hospital. But that's my opinion. I'm not a clinician. I'm not a I'm not a 
Luconage, a Tolugumala Oguganjanage, or Fanele Oguti Umtole, a spell, no more umfigures a spell. From the qualifications that you have testified about in this court that you obtained in 1976, does it include the ballistic care evidence? I've never done ballistics, no. It's not included in this decree. I never did a course in ballistics. ballistics. You further testified about the blackening on the wound track. You remember that, Doc? That's correct. She Did you take any samples along the blackening? Did you take any samples to the laboratory in order to determine whether what type of the blackening you saw, whether it was because of the powder or it was because of the cloth or any other thing? No, I did not. If that test was not done, how do we know what type of the blackening was there on the gunshot wound if it was not taken for examination? Well, that's the usual that we do. We don't do much others. We usually don't send those bloodstained suit and debris for examination, unless we want to do, we're not sure that it is, for instance, the stippling, for instance, then we would take histology. But I've never heard people taking from a wound the blackening. But to confirm, to confirm your observation, that should have assisted to confirm what you observed on the wound. Not really, unless I was doubtful as to what else it could be, and I don't know much what else, what much else it can be. Just one last question, Doctor. I know we have, we have answered this question, but I also want to get it from you. That you said at the time when the deceased was shot, from your observations, it means that he would have been facing inside the house. I'm not sure whether you still remember that picture where the door was shown. Yeah. Number 15, yeah. <clears throat> From your observation, then it, it would mean that the deceased was shot when he was facing inside the house. Not from my observations. No, no if, I mean from... If I consider the fact that there's a, that, that might be a bullet, wood, a bullet in the door or something, then that would make sense. Oh my God, if, sorry, sorry, if you can finish. But if he was shot from the other side, then there must have been a bullet towards the house. And it, that is from your observation that the exit wound was in front. No. So that the entrance wound was in front. That's correct, yes. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, my daughter. I've got no further questions. Thank you. Any re exam? <coughs> Maybe just one aspect. Doctor, you were asked by Council for Accusing Number Four about the possibility of blood dripping from the kitchen into the sitting room. You, you testify that. The, your findings was that the that blood would be squirting from the from the wound. Now the question is, after how long would? No, no. Uh, the doctor never said that. Yes. Uh, yes. Let, let me just rephrase. Yes. After how long would the blood start squirting from the wound? 
the blood only this the blood only squirts if there's an artery involved. Yes. So if you cut your artery, like your wrist artery, and the blood squirts out, yes. then you'd see this. The, the, the blood people or the ballistic people can probably tell you better about the squirt. That yes. kind of thing. But there was no artery involved here. Yeah? There was a, not externally. Yes. All this was internally. So blood was squirting, but internally. Not external. Any other thing you want to add, Doctor? No, thank you, my lord. Are you not master? Stand down. I am supposed to be. Like I know. The surgeons are very particular. About I know. That. They want to be called Mister. Yes. Mister. I'm actually a Mister. <laughs> That's correct, yes. We keep saying Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. When I was listening to your curriculum, I realized that we have a Master in front of us. Well, having said that, I don't know how you would have felt when you were still alive in the year 15 of July. Is it, is it March? When Julius Caesar was uh, assassinated? It was March, 15th yeah, of 15th March. Yeah, 15th of March, 44 before Christ, when the first post mortem was conducted. Yes. And the cause of death, despite the fact that he was stabbed 32 times or 25 times, okay. only one stab wound. Uh, was responsible for the death. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Can I be excused? Yeah, you're excused now. Yes, say. As a court, please, my lord, um, we've agreed with my colleagues that in light of the fact that this is an important aspect of the case that we perhaps lead one witness per day, mm. who then request that we stand down until tomorrow. We'll be calling the ballistic expert tomorrow, my lord. How many ballistic experts are you going to call? Uh, so far, only one, my lord. Okay. Yeah, it will give me time to read. Read on the subject. This judge, I don't go to court with a, a blank head. I prepare for the evidence which is supposed to be led. Yes. So I appreciate you borrowing me these uh, these books. Okay. As a good piece. Okay. Okay.